So I'm here at the really nice Copeland booth, actually. They always do a really great job with this, uh, and it is officially Copeland now, which we're excited about. And I'm here with Josh Souders. Is that what you're saying? You're listening? Josh Souders. And uh, Josh is going to talk us through a little bit about compressor modulation, so a little capacity control, that kind of thing. So. So what you're seeing right here is our next generation two-stage product. So we offer a wide variety of products, fixed speed, two-stage, and then what we view as like premium comfort is variable speed. So we'll talk about two-stage here and then we'll go around to the other side and see our next-gen variable speed. So two-stage really, what the benefit you're getting is the ability to run what we would call full load or 100% capacity, or you can unload part of the scroll, eliminate it from the, the compression cycle, and you can run about 66% capacity. So when you eliminate that part of the scroll from the compression cycle, you're obviously not doing any work, so you get a power improvement there. And so when you go to do your rating, when an OEM, whoever takes our two-stage, puts in their system and goes to do a rating, they get a huge benefit in SEER uptick um, and typically used in uh, non-base tier systems, usually used in like 15 or 16 SEER systems, kind of mid-tier stuff. Um, so you get, you get a big uh, increase from that. You also get some benefits as far as humidity control when you go to that. So by not having to shut off and on the compressor all the time, you're not... You're not cycling and the temperature and humidity aren't going up and then you turn it on and you go low and you go, so you're not getting this kind of peaking effect. What you're getting with two stages is more of a curve where you're kind of more closely following the building load line uh, and the demand, the demand line. So really that's a, one of the major benefits of uh, the two stages, uh, improved comfort and then uh, humidity control. Yeah, I always uh, talk about in terms of humidity, like you cannot dehumidify if the compressor is not running, right? And also, if you're cycling the equipment off, then you're re-evaporating that moisture out of the drain pan. So you're actually losing some of that work that you did, all that moisture that's collected on the evaporator coil, all that, which is a huge benefit, as well as, like you mentioned, the, the sear benefits are also pretty significant. Yeah, so, you know, typically, really hot day, you start running full load, you know, you start getting closer and closer in your temperature to hitting your, your load speed. Well, you know, maybe maybe you're, uh, you know, a couple degrees off. You can switch this to part load. Now, it depends on the OEM's logic and how they want to control it, but switch it to part load so you, you still get a little bit of the cooling, but you can really get the humidity out of the air and, and not, you know, do that peaking back and forth. And it's a really simple design, too, which I like about this particular compressor. Um, I've worked with this compressor quite a bit over the years, and this design is very reliable. Like, you don't get a lot of issues out of it. Yeah, so uh, the major benefit, obviously, between this and a variable speed is as you go to variable speed, you have all sorts of system cost adders, communicating controllers, you have an inverter that you have to add to the system. So the, the system cost starts to go really high. You do get better and more optimal comfort, you know, the superior level of comfort with a variable speed, but you also, you're going to take it in the wallet. So by going with the two stage, you get a very affordable package, but still get that premium comfort feel. And uh, a lot, with a lot of the tax incentives that are going on now, most of the two stage systems will qualify for a lot of those, whereas some of the fixed speed combinations might not, just because the efficiency level isn't quite where those incentive minimums are set. One of the things I've talked about over the years a lot, it kind of, maybe too much, people kind of get annoyed with me sometimes. When you go to more complicated electronics, they can do really great things, and I'm very pro that technology, but you really have to look at the power. You have to make sure that you're not going over voltage, you need to look at things like transients and surge and all that. So, as we kind of move into this next zone, you always want to think about that. And again, we're talking about the compressor itself, which is very durable, um, but a lot of times the inverters and everything that are put in by the OEMs, they are a little bit more sensitive. So if you're looking for something simple, durable, cost-effective, this is a really nice option. Yeah, you know, to your point about, you know, the durability in electronics, I, I think variable speed is it's fantastic. It offers, um, you know, the best overall solution. Obviously, you pay for it. but. To your point, there are, you know, you get what we, you know, hear people talk about vampire power. So the drive always has to be available to take a response. So you do get some of that effect. So, um, and the ratings calculations do take that into effect. Um, but as I said, you know, if you want simple, you want just, just works, you put it in place, it just works. You don't have to worry about it. This is, uh, this is what we consider the, the most affordable solution for that. And of course, it's in the, in the Copeland scroll, which is uh, really known to be the industry standard as far as reliability. So, Yeah, so for this particular model is our A2L compliant 
uh, version. So moving to low JWPs with uh, new refrigerants R454B and R32. And uh, one of the things we really focused on is, uh, you know, changes that we had to made, make to maintain reliability with those new refrigerants. So that was a huge portion of this new design release is just making sure we maintain that Copeland reliability that we're so known for. Awesome, great. Well, now let's move on to uh, option B here. All right, so now we're going to show the variable speed uh, coupling compressor. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so uh, this is our new YV, again, A2L compliant. Comes out full production later this year. Um, as we were talking about earlier with variable speed, you can really follow the demand line. You get a very small fluctuation, and ideally these things never shut off. You know, they run all the time. They just they uh, turn up or turn down to kind of meet the demand uh, that you have from your thermostat. So uh, I guess one, one thing, I guess, when you uh, look at it, though, you do require a lot, a lot of times you require a communicating thermostat with all sorts of control logic to be thrown in there to make sure, you know, instead of just an on-off signal, you need a, a signal that's really going to tell it when it ramped up and ramped down the frequency. So. Again, yeah, like we talked about in the last one, load matching. Uh, the technology is now very stable. Um, obviously, this is the latest, uh, the latest one out there. But talk a little bit about the how it's actually driven and how this works. Yeah, so uh, obviously with this, we have a permanent magnet motor. Uh, you can't just hook it up to you know your normal 230 three phase power. Um, we have a variable frequency drive, so every variable speed compressor is going to require one. If it's a true variable speed compressor, it's going to require an inverter to be able to drive it. So what will happen is your system controller and thermostat will send the inverter signal and tell it to adjust to whatever frequency. So this is our EVA3 drive. This came out last year. It's brand new from us. As far as I'm aware, it has one of the best uh, power to size ratios on the market. And we also integrated chokes and filters. So a lot of times what you find is uh, just due to drive noise, electronic noise, you have separate components for filters and chokes. And uh, it just adds more complexity when you go to service. It adds more wiring. So we try to integrate everything on one package. Um, this drive will take the signal, the control signal. It'll take your, your power in, your single phase power in. It'll um, do all the electronics and then push the signal and the power to the compressor and drive it at whatever frequency you want. So our compressor goes from 900 RPM all the way up to 7,000 RPM with a nominal of 3,600 RPM. So we would rate it at 3,600. So we'd say you can get like 190% speed, um, which is really important in like heating applications. Right, yeah. yeah, and when you think about, we were talking so much about cold climate heat pumps and heat pump capacity. It's really important if you want to be able to squeeze more heat out of this system to be able to spin those compressors up and, and, uh, and increase the frequency. So that's really cool, yeah. I also like to point out that my favorite name for a variable frequency drive is the field name Freak drive, because that just sounds really cool. You ever heard that before? Freak drive? No, they actually call it that sometimes. They call it a freak drive. So, so that's what that is. It's a freak drive. It's a very compact freak drive. So there you go. Yeah, Josh, this was really great. Thank you for introducing us to these compressors. Much appreciated. Yeah, uh, good to meet you. And uh, yeah, like I said, uh, these are out all this year, getting ready for the big transition. Uh, we also have a YAW compressor that's coming out, which is a vapor injected version of this. Okay, so nice. we're adding. For, for the 100% capacity cold climate heat pumps, uh, we're adding a, a line for that too. Awesome, incredible, thank you so much, Josh. All right, so I am here with Lance a lot, and we are going to talk about the Copeland oil-free centrifugal compressor. I definitely am not just reading this from the tag here that's, that's right in front of my face. So yeah, tell me a little bit about this compressor. What's it all about? So this compressor is an oil-free technology, uh, different from the magnetic bearing technology. It's an aero leaf bearing technology. It's a hydrodynamic type, uh, solutions versus what is existing. Uh, some of the best things about this technology, we eliminated some of the complexity that you typically will see with a magnetic band technology, higher pressure ratio type of uh, applications, going up to 6.5 pressure ratio. The baby you're looking at right now is 80 tons. We have a portfolio range from 50 to 200 tons. Uh, refrigerant for 515B, R1234ZE, and 513A and R134A refrigerant. This is this is a big baby. This is the centrifugal compressor, and I'm gonna. I have a I have a confession to make, okay. which is that when I was in Sydney, I actually got to see this probably two years ago when it was still being tested. So 
So I just, I, I, that's just a weird flex. That's all that is. It's no, no, no reason other than just to say that uh, it's pretty exciting. It's a very, very, very cool compressor. So talk a little bit about like, so, so yeah, oil free. For the people who don't understand what that means, uh, you're not using oil for lubrication, which means that you don't have to have oil circulating through the system, right? Yeah, I mean, outside of uh, the oil, being eliminated from the system, there's performance improvements that you see on a system standpoint. Uh, you will typically see this type of applications or this type of technologies in data center type applications where you get a lot more return back from your investments, right? Because continuous power being, uh, being pulled into the system, into the, into the infrastructure. Uh, we've been at it for seven years. You said you came, you came about 2000 and uh, 2000, 2000? 20, what was it? 2022? All right, so I joined. I joined. So I'm 22. Why am I talking like a weird person? <laughs> well, anyways, uh, I joined the team shortly before that. Okay. Right, I've been with the team for about five years now, and we've we've made a lot of progress from the initial design yeah. to the production design, which is what you're looking at, looking at here. But we eliminated the oil from the system. Um, we're moving uh, some of the complexity in the oil free. Uh, a magnetic bearing that you typically see is what we were targeting, and I think we've done a great job yeah. uh, with this design. Yeah. Well, and that was what, even at that time, we were talking about was the ones that were on the market currently had a lot of complexity and setup. There was a lot of like, you know, just if anything got off kilter, it would be a problem. And uh, that's a lot of what they were working on. It looks like they've really delivered on that. Yeah, we took some of the feedback from the market space, whether or not it was a uh, magnetic bang feedback, but also our feedback from sampling and engaging with some strategic OEMs and customers. And we redesigned some of the some of the, uh, the casing, because the one that you saw was probably a little bit different from the one, yeah, right. from the existing one. So we redesigned, uh, we given a total solution to the market space for what they wanted. Awesome, really, really, really great. Anything else uh, worth mentioning about this compressor? No, I mean, by July, August time frame, you start seeing these this boys out, outside. Uh, we have strategic OEMs that are already talking to us about it. I'm excited about it. Uh, hopefully everyone else outside is also yeah. excited to see I mean, this technology. And, uh, yes. so, yeah, awesome. Thank you, Thank you Thank so you. much, Lance. Not really good talking to Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate sure. it. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.